What is up, Pokemon people? This is Michael Sean from Unison Games with my fellow Team Metroflex member, Winter. Winter, what is up, dude? Yo, Michael Sean. Everything is up. It's a great day. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that it's a good one. Um, I'm super excited because we're looking at Champion's Path right now, which is pretty amazing. So uh, we're going to be doing a little set review. Um, I'm going to do a couple caveats right from the title screen here. The first caveat is I did not do every rare slash final evolution for this one. Um, a lot of this set, because it's a mini set, there's a bit of filler in it. And so a lot of the hollow rares are just undeniably unplayable Blue. right now. So we're just going to skip over a couple of those. The other thing that I want to say right off the bat, Champions Path actually has quite a bit of um, reprints. So I figured it would be cool to start out our video today with this. Winter, what is your favorite reprint in Champions Path? Even if it's Ooh. a different rarity, uh, even if it's a different rarity, it still counts. I mean, I really like the um, the Rainbow Piers. Okay. I'm a big fan of Rainbow Piers. <laughs> All right. That's cool. So sick. That's cool. I mean, like, I thought you were going to say Rainbow Charizard when you started saying that at first, but uh, oh. I feel like every everybody's probably at Rainbow Charizard, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, um, it's, it's kind of like at Teen Hundred right now. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a decent uh, amount of money for a card. I mean, like, I was surprised in Yu-Gi-Oh when we had 10,000 dragon hit like 1500 but but like this Charizard's already sold for over 2 grand like multiple yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um yeah, that's it's it's pretty wild and I may or may not have seen one in person. Um you you're going to have to check out our other videos for Champions Path to see if to see if that is uh that is true or not. But um I like the Eldegoss. I think the the art for Eldegoss is really cool. The Eldegoss, yeah, I mean it, it, Eldegoss is still like actually fairly expensive for like yeah for like how 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 Pokemon cards go. So I think having a reprint will bring it down to like the very desirable two dollar range. <laughs> I hope it doesn't quite hit two dollars, <laughs> but I think it'll be under five for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So just for those of you guys that haven't seen our set review, let's go ahead and talk about the rating system, which I have Charizard V Max popping out in the background. I know that. It's not Darkness Ablaze, but you guys that are watching can see we had to put Charizard VMAX in the video somewhere. So the rating system, we're going to be rating every card that we talk about from 1 to 5. 1 meaning trash garbage. 2 meaning pretty bad, but who knows. 3 is mediocre or unsure. 4 is seems good. And 5, of course, is Crazy Town Banana Pants. We're going to see that card on the table. So that is our, our system, 1 to 5. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. Winter, are you ready to jump in? I'm ready. Let's do this. Dude, let's go. All right. Starting out with one of my favorite Pokemon, Venusaur V. This is a 220 HP V Pokemon, fire weakness, three retreat. It has two attacks. The first is for two grass and a colorless pollen bomb. does 80 damage, and your opponent's active is now asleep and poisoned. The second attack is three grass energies and a colorless for solar typhoon, 220 damage, and during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Solar Typhoon. Uh, Winter, what do you think about this card? Um, I'm gonna give it a pretty. Uh, I'm gonna give it a one right off the bat, and here's why: Grass just isn't good right now. Um, yeah. Grass is pretty weak. Um, we're seeing Fire, Dark, even Water. Um, you know, Metal be be really good, but Grass is just not at that level. Um, paired with Venusaur being just pretty bad. I mean, the attack costs are high. And, you know, you could make the argument that 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 uh, this could go in, like, a Rillaboom deck. You could play a super meme um, Dust Island. So uh, their switches <laughs> their switches will... They'll try to switch their active Pokemon that has... Uh, that is both, uh, what is it, Poison and Asleep. Yeah. But uh, if they switch, their, uh, their new active Pokemon will just be the same. So it's kind of funny, and it's very meme-y, but it's not really what I want to play. So I'm going to give Venusaur a 1. Yeah, I uh, I love Venusaur a lot, but um, I definitely know that it is not the greatest Pokemon. Uh, with that said, Venusaur V is definitely a pre-evolution. Um, we are Garrett. We've seen art for a Venusaur V Max, presumably coming out in maybe Vivid Voltage or something. So we will be seeing an evolution for this card. But even as pre-evolutions go, it, it like with that in mind, 
It has low HP, which, like, Venusaur is a big Pokemon. He should have a little higher HP, I feel like, than 220. But, like, we've seen, like, some of these Vs come in at, like, 230, um, even 240 from time to time. So it has a little bit low HP. Fire weakness is bad, obviously. And I don't know. The damage output is just kind of mediocre to me. So unless we get something crazy for sleeping and poisoning, um, we may see something but yeah i'm gonna be right there with you like i'll give it a two just because we know there is a venusaur v max coming and maybe that'll be good but but yeah i don't i don't think it's a very good card so yeah we don't actually have a lot of pokemon for each type in fact we're just jumping right back into fire here going into incineroar v he's a 220 hp pokemon water weakness he has two attacks for two fire energy and a colorless you have Grand Flame, which is 90, and attach up to two Fire Energy cards from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. And then the second attack for three Fire and a Colorless, Flare Blitzer hits for 220, and it also does 30 damage to itself. So I actually really like this card. I think it's kind of cool. Um, of course, that first attack, it's got three Energy, which means we can pay it in one turn with Welder. And um, I've done a lot of playing around with Firebox-type decks, um, from Mew Mew to a more traditional Firebox kind of list, um, even Abilities Art and things like that. Um, and kind of the way that you play that is you play a bunch of these one up one of Pokemon, like something like Incineroar, something like Victini V, something like, um, you know, your Volcanion. And basically whatever one you get in your starting hand, that's the line of play you use for your first turn going second. And I think Incineroar is a totally viable line of play for that. I mean, if you think... If you have a Giant Hearth and an Incineroar, that's just amazing because it's like you pitch a Fire Energy to Giant Hearth, get to Welder them on, draw three, hope for a Quick Ball or something to discard another Fire Energy, and now your like Centiscorch or whatever on the bench has two more Energies. I think it's pretty good. Plus, you're doing 90 damage. So, like, let's say your opponent has a Jirachi in the active, like you just take a knockout. So, I think that's pretty good. I think the damage output is fine. 220 again is just kind of like whatever, very mediocre. Um, but it's better on Incineroar than it is on Venusaur because Incineroar is not weak to fire. Of course, Inteleon is doing pretty good right now, but I would say less. it's less prevalent than fire at the moment. But yeah, that's where I'm at on this card. I like it. The second attack is just whatever, but I don't really think you're ever going to use it. So what do you think, Winter? Um, I actually really like this card. Um, it's really good, and one thing I like about it is it's a very strong fire attacker for two... Uh, prizes, it, you know, it, it's a it's it's a regular V that has a really strong attack. I'm actually the opposite. I actually am like I think the first attack is kind of mediocre. I really like the second attack because of uh, four energy is not hard to get now with Flare Starter right. and getting 220. Even though you could take a little bit of damage here, this can knock out a Luke Metal. Um, it can knock out a Luke Metal even with the GX move being used. Uh, um, uh, uh, full what is it? Full Metal Wall GX and having the metal goggles on it so this one mm. attack can knock that out in one hit um which is i think worth noting weakness card energy of course is a thing but um this this attack with weakness will actually be able to to, to one hit knock out a loop metal so um i actually really like the second attack a little more and i think this card is pretty good um especially with fire being so strong um so i'm gonna give this card a three i'm gonna give it a three all right yeah, I mean, I think uh, yeah, I, th I think you are right actually about that second attack. If you're if you're not playing like a V Max build of Firebox, um, Incineroar actually can probably hit for more damage than your other Pokemon can. So, um, so that that is a good point. Uh, as far as Vs go, it actually probably has one of the highest damage outputs of the Fire Vs that we use in Firebox. Yes. So yeah, that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, I, I, I agree that it's probably at a three and only because I think it would be higher, except there's so many options for fire that, um, you know, you're only going to see this in low counts probably in firebox decks. And there's so many other good Pokemon. I don't know that I could say that it's head and shoulders above a lot of the other ones. So I'll be right there with you. Go into our next Pokemon and our next typing. Winter, I'm going to let you talk about this one first. We got Wailord V and it this thing is a tank. It's got 280 HP. For one water, you can draw up, attach up to three water energy cards from your discard pile to this Pokemon. And for four water energies, you can Ocean Waves. Flip three coins. This does 120 damage per heads. Winter, talk to me about this card, man. Yeah, I mean, this card is super sweet. I, I really, I'm a big Waylord fan. I have been since I was like, what, 
12. Um, I just thought it was cool that it was such a huge Pokemon. Um, and this guy is really huge. He is actually, he broke a record. He has the largest a, uh, HP for a two prize Pokemon. 280 is the largest HP for a two prize Pokemon. Awesome. Um, draw up is really good. Uh, you can really accelerate those water energies. Um, Waylord's always been like a really big, like heavy uh, water energy attacker. So you can do that. Um, Ocean Waves is cool with Glimwood Tangle because you could potentially be doing 360 damage before weakness, uh, before any like extra addition, like additional damage, you could potentially be doing 360 just in this card alone, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Glenwood Tangle makes that easier. And the way I would like to play it would be, so we have um, in the next set, we have a special water energy coming and it'd be kind of funny to play uh, like how people are playing Scorch now where they're playing the special water energy and accelerating that um and then using like aurora energy to like just accelerate really quick and just like like be ready on your turn to attacking that would be that would be such a meme but it'd be so much fun but realistically i think this card's really good um it also is a four retreat cost so if you wanted to play that also meme uh steelix deck where you have to discard four uh retreat cost pokemon to use the attack this card is also really good it's super tanky and uh, can stall as well. I think I think I'm gonna give this card a three. I I, I really like it. Actually, I'm gonna give it a three point five. I think it deserves a little bit more than a three just because it breaks a record there. Yeah, I'm gonna give it like a straight up four. Actually, I, I think this card's super cool. Um, you did just mention the four retreat cost, which is awesome. You can play it in Steelix, but you can also use Buff Padding to give it even more HP, which is yes. kind of insane um be rocking like over 300 hp on a two prizer that's kind of crazy um i really like it i think one of the things that nobody has talked about and maybe that's because it's bad but i don't care because i thought of it when i looked at this if you draw up turn one and then turn two get lapras v max out there that's a lot of water energies you just put on the board like nobody's talking about it but i'm just saying it's only a v and i think that's one of the cool things about waylord is that like we've got this huge hp for essentially nothing like you just play it down in your bench so and then you're just rocking 280 so i think it's pretty cool um and then of course like a stall deck i think waylord v is the best the best version of that that we have and uh that's something that you know you'll probably hear me saying more in the video um because that's a kind of a theme in champion's path is trying to like you know just tank and i think waylord v is our best option just because it only costs it only gives up two prize cards and it just has like a huge upside of 280 hp just for playing the card um so so yeah i, I like wheeler v a lot the reason why i would not give this card higher is because i think right now with with Pikaram coming back and actually being something pretty significant um it it, it is it kind of does uh fall short having the weakness to lightning this this card could very well be much better after Pikaram rotates out. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. Yeah, you definitely get skunked by Pikaram. Yeah, that's that's kind of the problem here because I mean you may have buff padding, which is which is ideal, but um one uh full bliss is gonna knock you out. Right, right. Yeah. So, that's very true. Yeah. Sweet. Well let's go to our, our next card here. We got another water type tank, Dreadnaw V and Dreadnaw V Max. Um, both of them have this ability Solid Shell, which just says that they take 30 less from attacks. Dreadnought V has 210 HP and one attack for two water and a colorless powerful bite does 130 damage. And during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon cannot retreat. And then the VMAX has 320 HP and has one attack, two waters, and a colorless G-Max headbutt. You can do 160 damage, plus if you flip a coin and you get heads, it's 80 more damage. So again, this is, uh, we're going to say, I think, somewhat similar things. Obviously, Pikram is not going to uh, treat this card nicely. Um, but even beyond that, uh, the card itself is kind of cool because it has 320 HP, but realistically, it kind of has more because you have that, this Pokemon takes 30 less from attack. So even if they were going to try to one-shot you, they'd have to hit for 350. And then obviously, if, uh, if they can't one-shot you, which most Pokemon won't be able to, um, you're you're going to be taking essentially you add 60 HP to your to your HP there for 340. It has four um, retreat costs, which means you can use buff padding as well. A lot of the same stuff as Waylord there. Um, the damage, I mean, I think 160 with a coin flip for 80 is actually kind of okay. 
Um, I don't mind that very much. I think my big problem is I don't know if I want to be playing a tank deck that has a three prizer in the active because I feel like that is just a lot less good than Whirler V, and I think that's my problem with this card. Winter, what's your take on this? I don't like Dreadnought V, but I understand that Dreadnought V is simply a tool to evolve into Dreadnought V Max. So yeah, Dreadnought V I'm not about. I think the card is really bad. Um, Solid Shell is a cool ability. I mean, we've seen it before on Blastoise GX, I think was the last time uh, Pokemon had uh, had Solid Shell. So we've seen that effect before. Now, Dreadnought VMAX I actually like. Um, it's kind of basic, and I, I don't really like I don't really like coin flip attacks like this, um, mm. you know, where you're where you where you get you get a damage amount, then you get more damage if you hit the coin flip. I don't really like those kind of attacks, um, but I think it's definitely strong. But with a buff padding, you now need 400 damage to knock out this Pokemon, and right. I think that's definitely something worth noting. Yeah. Um, water could water like a water stall deck be something in the future? Honestly, probably because yeah. the, 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 these these are very tanky Pokemon we're working with here um, that all take buff padding um dreadnought v like i said is kind of irrelevant there's nothing about this card that excites me um but dreadnought v max is uh, is pretty tanky I, I i i would like to actually play this card i think i think it's cool um the, like you said the attack is 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 decent i mean at worst it does 160 that's not terrible i mean that's that's like uh that's like uh intellion v max with no ability you know mm-hmm. and so that's not too bad you know the upside is is good too but yeah, I like Dreadnought V Max. I I would probably give Dreadmaw V uh, just a one, because you know what I mean. It's it's nothing special. Uh, Dreadnought V Max, I'm gonna give it a three. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna be right in the middle with it. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. And the, I think Dre- you're right about Dreadnought V, except for the fact that they're with Solid Shell. Dreadnought V actually has like a decent amount of HP for a V Pokemon. Like if you think of it as 210 plus 30, like there's not a whole ton of Pokemon that can get up to 240 or at least a whole ton of Pokemon that people are playing that gets up to 240. So, like, you're escaping, like, a hit from Zacian um, with Dreadnought V and stuff like that. So I think Dreadnought V has some survivability, which is good because we really want to evolve into that Dreadnought V Max. One thing that does actually make Dreadnought V Max better than Waylord V as far as stalling is we are getting a stadium in the next set that will heal V Maxes when they evolve. So, yeah, oh, I mean, like, I'm right. at... I'm at I'm, I think I'm right with you. I like Whale right now, like in the current meta, I like Whale Lord V a lot better than I like Dreadmo- Dreadnought V Max. And I would probably rather play like a quad Whale Lord V than I would play a combination of the two. So I'm going to give, I gave Whale Lord a four. I'm going to give Dreadnought V Max a three because I do like it a little bit less. But it is, it's a cool Pokemon. So yeah. I think yeah. we're moving into, yeah, psychic types here. Uh, no lightning in this set. Um, seem, seems a little seems a little <laughs> rude, but that's all right. Gardevoir V Max. They're saving it for next set. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Vivid Voltage is going to have a lot of good lightning stuff in it. So, um, Gardevoir V Max, same sort of theme, but going about it a little bit differently. Um, Gardevoir V has 210 HP, Metal Weakness, which is worth noting. Uh, even though it is psychic, it is retaining the press F for Fairy Weakness of Metal. Um, its attacks are for one psychic, you can do magical shot for 30 and for a psychic, for two psychic and a colorless, you can swelling pulse for 120 plus if this was healed this turn, this does 80 more damage. Then the VMAX is 320 HP and for two psychic and a colorless, you got max cure 180 and you heal 50 damage from this. Um, kind of an interesting card. I, I'm a huge Gardevoir fan, um, just as a Pokemon in general. Uh, Winter, what's your take on these? Um, yeah, unfortunately, Psychic is kind of is kind of in a weird spot right now because uh, Dark and Steel are both very like super oppressive. Like you know, and it's and it's, it's so, so you, you can you can kind of see that like with the with the with the unfortunate uh, rotation of Malamar, Psychic decks really haven't been played you know outside of Mew Mew but Mew Mew essentially is a whatever you want it to be deck right. <laughs> you know it's barely a psychic um, but it's still deck. it's barely a psychic deck um yeah I mean Gardevoir V is is pretty okay um I, I think this card uh is is uh is all right I mean I'm more excited about the Gardevoir V Max of course um but uh, I think I think uh Gardevoir V is fine I think Magical Shot is kind of weird just having a one energy attack for 30 um but his Pokemon was healed during this turn do 80 more damage I mean that's you know, potentially 200 damage isn't too bad. 
Um, but I think it's the acceleration right now that's kind of the problem. Uh, you know, this this um, Malamar was actually legal when some of these cards came out because they came out in different sets. Um, so there was success with them, but that's because we had an accelerant like Malamar. So um, Gardevoir V and, and Gardevoir VMAX, uh, both cool cards. I, I actually like that uh, Gardevoir VMAX um, because of the kind of the, 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 the heel theme going on. I can see that with them, but I don't think they're as good. I, I think we're going to have to wait until Dark and Metal are kind of more in check. And then we can kind of evaluate psychics. I think we just need a little help with them right now. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Um, I will say that there is a card that has some healing for psychic in this set. Um, so that's that's kind of cool, um, which we'll get to later on. Um, and I'll also say there's a card coming in the next set that allows evolutions to use attacks of their previous evolution. And I think that's where Swelling Pulse, that second attack on Guard of War V, is going to be relevant. Um, where you can actually heal Gardevoir VMAX and then use this tool that you're going to be able to attach that's essentially Memory Berry, where it's just Swelling Pulse and you hit for 200 damage, which is, like Winter said, a really good amount. So I think that there's potential with these, but I totally agree that having Metal Weakness is just going to mess you up several times over, and you're going to get one-shotted. I mean, it only has 320 HP, which means they only have to do, what, 160 to kill you yeah um that's a little scary since metal decks you know it's not that hard to do 160 i will say doesn't luke metal hit for 150 150 yeah 150 okay so they're just off but like goon and you know vitality band or something like like i i yeah i'm i'm just i think i'm a little too scared of metal to play guard of war v max right now so i'm gonna give it like a two because i do think it has potential i don't think it's a straight up one but i don't think it's we're gonna see it on the table for a little while so, yeah, let's move on then. We actually have another psychic Pokemon here. Galarian Cursula V has the ability uh. Gnawing Aura. <laughs> as long as this is in the optic spot, when your opponent attacks, it attaches an energy card from their hand to one of their Pokemon, put three damage counters on that Pokemon. And then for a psychic and a colorless, you got Hollow Missile 60 and put three damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you would like. Uh, this is basically Arc Dissolt, but on a two prizer, and it has to be in the active. So it's like worse Arc Dissolt. Uh, it does put three damage counters where I think Arc Dissolt did two, if I remember correctly. So, but it's just like, it's just really bad. This card is like a 0.5. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a one. <laughs> no, this card is so bad. I mean, this is probably the worst V behind uh, Pinchurchin, except yeah. Pinchurchin is cute. That's where Pinchurchin went. Yep. This is like the worst beat. That, um, yeah, yeah. Celebi's pretty bad. I, too. I don't. The the funny thing is, I actually really like Galarian Corsola as a Pokemon. Like, I think the idea of it is really cool. Like, yeah. the 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 uh, the activism kind of aspect to it. You know, that we have to save our oceans, or you know, we lose. You know, we lose these uh, the you know the precious marine life. I think is a cool little message they threw in there. But unfortunately, this card is not a good representation of the Pokemon because it is bad. Yeah, it's real bad. I agree. Um. Yeah, I don't really have much more to say about it. I think it's a solid one here. I think we can just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. All right, we got another Psychic yeah. Pokemon. We got a lot of Psychic Pokemon in this. Uh, Alchemy V Max. So uh, we got 170 HP Alchemy V with two attacks, one Psychic, Sugary Sprinkles, heal 30 damage from each of your bench Pokemon, and a Psychic and two Colorless get Sweet Splash for 100 if the defending Pokemon is basic. It can't attack next turn. The VMAX has 310 HP, and for one colorless, you got adornment for each of your bench Pokemon. Search your deck for a psychic Pokemon, a psychic energy card, and attach it to that Pokemon. And two psychic G Max Whisk 60 times. Discard any amount of energy from your Pokemon. This does 60 damage for each card you discarded this way. Well, there, I guess, is some energy acceleration for Psychic, which we were talking about how bad Psychic needs. But, Winter, why don't you tell us why this does not fix the problem for Psychic? Wait a minute. Hold on. Jolteon EX, is that you? What? Is that you, Jolteon EX? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, no, it's just Alchemy V with Sweet Splash. No, it just reminds me of, uh, Jol it's, it's literally Jolteon EX's ability. Kind of, um, yeah. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. On the, on the Alchemy. Um, Alchemy's really bad because... Doing a hundred for three, I mean, I get, I get, you know, it's kind of like a basic lock, but like, I, I don't know, I just don't really feel like it's where you want to be, especially because you can't twin energy, 
you can't um, triple acceleration energy on, on this. So that means you're using it kind of late. Um, you know, with, with Obstagoon, I mean, that, that is a stage two, but you have more efficient ways of, of, of using the attack than this. Right. Um, so Alchemy B, you know, um, isn't, isn't really that great. Um, but I don't know. We'll see if there's some sort of basic lock with it. Alchemy V Max is interesting. So it's unfortunate because I feel like the HP, like 310, you know, the, the, the line, the gap between 310 and 320 is just astronomical. Yeah, it's like, big. you know what I mean? It's a really big difference because we have a V now that's 280 and a V Max that's 310. That's 30 HP apart. Yeah. And there's an extra prize we're taking here. Um, I actually don't like Alchemy V Max. I think it's kind of cool. But I think the problem here is that one, it's tough to kind of set up because you, you know, I mean, you can use Turbo Patch or you know, you could try doing the um, the Porygon uh, Z combo with it. But I feel like it's just a worse version of Whimsicott. Like Whimsicott keeps the energy for the most part, not triple acceleration, of course. Um, but um, you know, there's an argument for recycle energy. But I just don't feel like Alchemy V Max is really that great. I think the card is beautiful probably one of the coolest pokemon cards i've ever seen yeah so i, I will give it a lot of credit um and it, and it can potentially hit you know a, a lot of damage which yeah. is which is cool but then you kind of have to be like okay now i've got to accelerate again so yeah. i could see you using porygon z but i just feel like it's not strong for the downside of having to give your opponent three prizes when it gets knocked out dude can you imagine if we had baby naga noodle with this card i mean naga noddle I mean, Naganadel? No, Naga Noodle. Naga What'd you noodle. say, Noodle Nadel? Naga, <laughs> Naga Noodle, man. Naga Noodle. Can you imagine if we had that, the one from Lost Thunder? Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that would be pretty insane because you'd have a lot more. You'd have a lot more utility. Um, yeah, that would be. I think well, this card um, would be good if that was still legal, but it's not. Yeah, it's not. That's the thing. This is from any from any Pokemon here. I mean, like you know, you could Turbo Patch. You could get some uh you know uh get some you know like a you quick ball away like a psychic or quick ball away whatever i assume you're playing this in a psychic deck quick ball away a psychic right. and a turbo patch it back i mean there's ways to accelerate but i i just don't feel like this this i don't feel like it's worth three prizes because this will get knocked out especially mm -hmm. especially with the weakness to steal because um i mean zama zenta almost knocks it out you know yeah, like <laughs> right right um it, it, a loop metal with a vitality band knocks it out you know so um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give I'm gonna give I'm gonna give them both like a two each. Uh, okay. One because I think basic lock is 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 cool, um, and I think Alchemy V Max is the the idea is cool. But like, let's see what happens with it. Let's see what actually gets done. I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give that that pair a two right there. Yeah, I think I'm right there with you, man. There's definitely some uh, potential here. Like, just in a vacuum, the card looks okay, but. Um, well, the attack looks okay. Let, let me rephrase. The attack looks okay, but I think the card as a whole, and with the meta that we have, I just I, I don't think we're gonna see this card anywhere. But yeah. in binders, because it is beautiful. In fact, Alchemy V Max right. is the background on the video that you guys are watching right now. So, um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. All right, let's move to our next one. We're hitting our fighting Pokemon here. And like I said, I did bypass most of the rares, but I did want to include a conversation about Machamp because I do think Machamp is kind of interesting. It's a stage two Pokemon, yeah. 170 HP, and it's really the first attack that we're looking here. Uh, a fighting in a colorless is Macho Revenge 20 times. This does 20 damage for each fighting Pokemon in your discard pile. And then for two fighting energy and one colorless, you can Falcon Punch. Just kidding, it's Dynamite Punch 200 this does 50 damage to itself. So Macho Revenge, kind of interesting. We've seen a lot of attacks, uh, a lot of um, attacks similar to this in the past with Vespaquen, with Night March, with Mad Party. However, Machamp has the serious downside that it does 20 damage for each fighting Pokemon in your discard pile. So it's not just Pokemon in general, it's fighting Pokemon. And I think that that's a big issue with it. We do have stuff like clay and hapu that can help you out with this um and the upcoming uh how did you pronounce it earlier winter b or bay oh yeah b, b or bay i've been calling her bay all right we'll call her b bay for now so b bay yeah. will uh will also help you with this in the next set so i'm not saying it's like impossible if you're a machamp fan you got to build machamp let's put it that way but uh i'm not super hyped for it winter what do you think about this card 
Uh, I like the memes. I think it's kind of cool. I, th- I, I I like the. Uh, I've always been a fan in any card game I've played, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic. Um, uh, I've always been a fan of like discard pile slash graveyard strategies where you have to like pump up. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't like this card. I mean, it's a stage two. Yeah. Um, it's hard to set up. It's, you know, um, I'm just, I'm going to give it like, I'm going to give it like a one. I mean, it's a stage two, you know what I mean? It's not horrendously bad. Like Galarian Cursola, which should be better because it's a V. Right. And it's actually, it's better than Galarian Cursola. Um, but I just, I don't, um, (laughs) I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to give it a one. I don't really like it. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. I'm going to give it a one as well. Um, I had to talk about it just because I have actually heard a decent amount of chatter about this card. So uh, we had to address it, but I think the downsides are too big. It, it's got to be a one for me. But yeah. we got some more fighting Pokemon that might actually look okay. So let's move on to them. First one up here is Lucario V. It's a 210 HP uh, fighting Pokemon for one fighting energy. You can Aura Sphere for 40 And this does 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And for two fighting and a colorless, you can beat down Smash for 180. And during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use beat down Slash. What's your opinion on Lucario, Winter? Oh, man, this card should be good, but it's not, unfortunately. Um, I think it's a a really weak attempt at, um, at, at sniping for a fighting Pokemon for... 40 plus 20 on the bench is pretty weak. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's unfortunate, too, because we just had Deancey, yeah. which could have been a damage multiplier. Um, yeah. And, and it, you know, in Expanded, this might be a little bit different. In Expanded, this might be a little better because we have strong energy. We have Deancey. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, Muscle Band. You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways this card can be a little bit better, especially now with the telescope lens or telephoto lens or whatever you want to call it coming next, which increases your... Um, the your snipe damage now that's that's something to think about too as it stands right now i think this card is pretty bad i'm, I'm not even going to address the 180 um because uh I, I i don't think that's good um i mean fighting fighting does keep dark in check this can one shot eternatus yeah which i think is important to know uh this can one shot eternatus um but i don't really think it's that good at least right now yeah um at least right now there has been kind of this theme of more snipe damage coming up i've actually been on the hunt for for cards that that do snipe because i feel like sniping is going to be more relevant yeah but um as it stands right now i, I give this card uh like a two i i don't think it's really that good yeah right now right now. i'm gonna say right now beat down smash is like pitifully bad um yeah. you didn't say anything about it because you couldn't speak of it because it's so bad and i'll just come out and say it it's terrible and i i don't know i'm sort of frustrated with the pokemon company right now with their fighting uh printing and and this is the reason everybody's talking about how fighting could be really good because dark could be really good and the problem is is i feel like what pokemon is doing is they're printing less good fighting pokemon on purpose because they want eternatus to be good like that's what it feels like to me and it's like just print equally powerful cards in all the typings so that we get to choose what type we want to play you know, and I think the the Pokemon Company. I mean, they just did a set called Darkness Ablaze. Like they want darkness to be good right now, and I think that's why stuff like this is happening to our our favorite dark Pokemon. And it just feels really bad to see Lucario that hits for like so much less damage than equivalent attacks hit for on other Vs. Like even Venusaur hits for two twenty. Uh, granted, it's right. for four energy, but still. So I actually don't hate Aura Sphere though. Like I actually don't mind Aura Sphere, and the reason why I don't mind it is because it only costs one. Um, and so what I can see uh, emerging from the meta, and I'm I'm kind of you know keeping my eye on this, and that is a Fighting Box deck, kind of like how Firebox has been playing, but I like it sounds Fighting Box, and Aura Sphere is going to be amazing in uh, in that I believe. So that's that's my opinion. I'm going to give this card right I'm right here with you. I'm, I'm only going to give it a two, but I actually do think that Aura Sphere will fit well into a fighting box style deck. I don't think that that deck is viable quite yet, but I think it's on its way. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm on this card. Um, I think it would be better uh, if, if the attack was uh, 60 for one. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know that I know it's a stretch, and I know that it's it's kind of easy to say, "Oh, this would be better if." Yeah. But I mean, Stone Drummer V is a pretty mediocre V, and that does forty for one. Yeah. With you take thirty less next turn. Right. Right. So you know, like, uh, and, and I I actually am playing Stone Drummer V Max this week, so I am very excited about it. 
but I'm just saying it's it you know it's 40 for one is um you know I don't know the card is just kind of mediocre so but yeah. we we've already we've already gone over that part yeah dude yeah no I'm right I'm right with you man let's move on to yeah. our next uh fighting Pokemon we got Graplocked V 210 HP mm. on this guy 210 HP one fighting energy will get you tie up 20 damage if the defending Pokemon is basic it can't attack during your opponent's next turn two fighting and a colorless moon salt press 120 plus flip a coin if heads this does 100 more damage winter dude uh you like grapple locked any better than you like uh lucario v oh i like it a lot less <laughs> yeah man i like it a lot less yeah man um no this, this card is like in the same league as galarian Cursola. it's bad don't play it um i don't even really like grapple locked as a pokemon yeah i think it's kind of weird I, I don't even i think it's a I think it's a weird looking Pokemon. I mean, I grew up as a kid, and for some reason, I was really scared of the octopus. Okay. I don't know why. Um, it was. It, it, um, I like Octillery though. That's the thing. I like Octillery as an what? octopus Pokemon. That's so weird. Grappalock is kind of like weird. It looks. It looks like it's gonna beat me up, and I don't like that. I just. I just want to say. I hope that this happened in the anime. And admittedly, I have not watched the new anime, but I want to see Grapplocked versus Machamp. Like, I just want to see that fight. You know what I mean? Like. Somebody needs to cover that on their YouTube channel and just animate it out, Graplocked versus Machamp, um, because Graplocked kind of looks like a derpy version of Machamp to me. Um, yeah. But Hey, four, four at a time arm wrestling. Let's do it. <laughs> there we go. That's the episode. So I will say, Moonsault Press, uh, if you really want to play this card and you go after it with, like, your Gloomy Tangles and stuff, you're essentially, like, hitting 220, but, like, with little to no downside like if you're playing glimwood tangle 75 percent of the time you're just gonna be able to hit for 220 which admittedly is not bad like a lot of stuff can hit for 220 but they always have downsides so like you know um obviously zation v hits for 230 but you can't attack next turn so it's like that's kind of interesting and i see what they were going for but i don't think that they got there so that's the only thing I'll mention, but this is this is a one for me. Is it a one for you too? Oh, it's a it's a, it's a point five. Oh, it's a point no. five. No, we'll give it a one. We'll give it a one. Okay, we'll give, we'll give it a one because the one is actually our lowest. But um, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. Give it a one. But Galarian Cursula still gets a point five. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. it's it's it's, uh, it's um it's actually worse than Galarian Cursula, but um yeah, okay. Galarian Cursula is really bad. So. <laughs> All right. uh, I, I don't know. They're both. They're both really. They're bad. both really bad. Okay, they're in the same category. <laughs> they both get a combined one. They Com both get. Oh, they, okay. they like it's a, it's a one combined with for them. There we go. That's a good way to put it. I like it. All right, let's go to our next Pokemon here. We got Galarian Obstagoon. This is another one of those rares that I had to put on here because he's got this cool ability, Wicked Ruler. Once during your turn, you may have your opponent discard cards from their hands until they have four cards in their. Hey, a knuckle impact is really bad. Don't don't use it if you don't have to. But Wicked Ruler, I think this is actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, you may have your opponent discard cards in their hands until they have four cards. You're just p forcing them. I would say for free. It's not really for free because it is a stage two, so you got to get there. But I think if you're playing goons um, and you're not doing the lone goon strategy, I don't see why you don't throw at least one of these in your deck. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. What do you think, Winter? Yeah, I mean, I actually really like this card a lot. And honestly, I don't even think the attack is that bad. Uh, 180 for something that you can just triple acceleration energy onto. That's true. Is, That's true. Is, 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 is really good. I mean, 180 for a one prizer is incredible. Like, like right now, the only thing, like, the only one prizers we have that can do damage like that in standard are Aerodactyl, but you have to meet the, you have to meet the requirement, otherwise it does 90. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, uh, Golisopod, which can do what is it? Uh, it's like an extra fifty for each Pokemon. So like, yeah. you know, these those are one prizes that hit a lot of damage. But like, Glaren Obstagoon one hundred and eighty, that's pretty good already. Like, I, I'm not even upset about that. Like a triple acceleration energy, and then like the ability, it doesn't have to be in the active once per turn. You may have your opponent discard cards in their hand until they have four cards in their hand. That's that's also really good. That's yeah. like um, you know, that's that's, that's kind of like um, uh, I mean, the Persian, not really, but it's Dude, kind of like, it's it's kind of like let loose a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's well, true. Yeah, per, yeah, right. It's literally make them it's pay per, on an ability. Yeah, make them pay on an ability. Yeah, and so like you know that's um, I I think it's a good card. I I really do, and I think it will see play. Um, I I like it a lot. I like the control aspect, and I like that when you need it to, it can hit for a ton of damage. 
You know, this, mm-hmm. this, 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 this can knock out. Um, just, no, I don't think there's any actually. Any, I, don't, I don't think there's any relevant V's that. Well, are, I, mean, I mean, it can Crobat, knock out Crobat. Yeah, and, Crobat. And right, Eldegoss. Right, Crobat. Wait, wait, I got it. Alchemy V. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Alchemy Alchemy V is uh, steel weakness too. Okay, it's only 170 though, right? Yeah. Oh, Alchemy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. Yeah, that's right. It is only 170. It is only 170. I, yeah. I'm thinking 190. I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's <laughs> yes, only 170. Alchemy V. Yeah, it can knock out on Kirby V. That's right. Yeah, dude. That's right. Um, so yeah. So I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three. Um, you know, it is a stage two, but the the uh, it's a pretty strong one prizer. I agree. I'm gonna give it a three as well. Um, I'm definitely looking at this card. Like I, I'm I'm thinking about it. You know, it, it's it's in the back of my mind. Like kind of like, hmm, I wonder if we can make that happen. Um, so you might see me with it on the table. I don't know. I think I already have my play set. So. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm right there with you, man. I think it's cool. Let's see what else this set has to offer in dark. I don't. Oh, there is one more card we got to talk about. I think, um, and that is, dude, Scrafty is back. We haven't seen a Scrafty card oh. in like forever, so we got to talk about it. Um, 120 HP, stage one, one darkness, corner, 30 damage during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't retreat. And for a darkness and two colorless, you got Bad Brawl, 90 plus if you played Pierce from your hand during this turn. This does 90 more damage. So you're essentially hitting 180. So for the same reason you just said Obstagoon's attack is pretty good, I kind of like Bad Brawl. Not going to lie. like Because you're in a dark deck. If you're playing a deck similar to this, you're going to try to play Pierce every turn probably. Like that seems fine to me. And then you just hit for 180. I think that's kind of fun. It's on a stage one. I don't think it's amazing, but like I thought it was fun. So I figured we'd talk about it. Have you Have you thought anything about this card? Yeah, and, and here's my thought. So it, it's a it's a one prizer. Um, if you play peers, you, you could potentially do 180. The problem is, is that really a lot of competitive decks aren't really playing a lot of peers. It's true. Um, dark deck, dark decks. You can you can quick ball. You can uh, you can poke a calm if you need to. Like, there's not really any use for peers. Um, I, honestly, I see peers more in non-dark decks to 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 be able to hit Crobat. Mm-hmm. more than dark decks do if you're playing eternatus you're gonna hit crobat right i mean you play four quick ball you play four three to crobat. four poke and you're, you're crobatting already you know right. so so i, I don't I, i'm not really you know like so basically to make this card decent i have to play four peers which i don't want to do mm-hmm. because really i mean maybe maybe down the road this could be a little bit better but now with you know your supporter spots are pretty much for marnie a research yeah. and boss's orders right and you know you need to make sure you're with only one supporter a turn you got to make sure you're supporter incorrectly and now i think more than ever i i have seen marnie is now four ofs in every deck so you, you need to be hitting marnie mm-hmm. um boss's orders when you need it i feel like peers just kind of clogs up your turn your supporter for turn yeah and if that's the case you're not going to want a peers so this is only going to do 90 so right i'm looking at this as this card is going to do only 90 and I, I'm not really a fan. I, I, I'm gonna give this a one. Yeah, I'm not giving like I'm not giving it anything more than like I'll give it a one point five, just because I like the card, okay. just because I, I like Scrafty. I think he's funny. Um, but uh, but I don't know. I I think uh, I think Pierce is okay, but I think like you're totally right. Right now, nobody's playing Pierce, and you would basically have to build around Pierce if you wanted to make this deck happen. So I don't know what you'd be playing. In that case, maybe some kind of dark box type E thing, but um, I don't know, maybe Hydreigon, I don't know. But um, I think it's fun, so I'm going to give a 1.5. That's where I'm at. Fun, and fun is what it's all about. That's right, that's right. Thank you for reminding us it's that. True. It's all about the fun. Yeah. It's all, it's all about the fun. If it's not fun, don't do it. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah. Um, but yeah. if it's fun for you and not fun for your opponent, that's okay. Play control all you want. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, it's fun for you. Go for it. If your opponent doesn't like it, well, that's too bad. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. Uh, we have our solitary metal Pokemon next. The only metal Pokemon in the set, Duraludon V. It has this ability, Hard Coat. This takes 30 less damage from attacks. We should play like a game to see if somebody can name all the Vs that have that ability. Um,. Because it's like six. Yeah, right. It's like six different ones. So this takes 30 less from attacks. And then three colorless will get you Gatling Slug. Yeah, Gatling Slug, 10 plus. This does 40 
more damage for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. So let's run through the math really quick. If you have three metal energies attacked, three times 40, that's 120 plus 10, 130 damage from Hard Coat. Oh, but it does have grass resistance. We can't we can't uh, can't forget about that. So Butterfree, watch out. What do you think, Winter? Oh boy. Um, you know, I love how this card looks. I think it's yeah. really pretty looking. Oh, yeah. Um, because Duraludon is a cool Pokemon. But um I mean this it's just it doesn't you know, like this this might be a little different if you had Magnezone in the format. Mm -hmm. But Magnezone just rotated out. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any way to accelerate a lot of a, a lot of energy to this guy and you know, like you can't, you can't, you can't welder to it because you're doing ten damage. You got to right. do metal. Um, you know, you could, you could um, metal saucer. You could turbo patch. But I mean, really, doing 130 when you have three on there is just, is just mediocre. You spent all yeah. this time getting three metal energy onto a card that's just not good. I mean, um, now 220 with 30 minus though. That's not terrible. Um, that's mm -hmm. not bad. You know, it's tanky. Yeah. Um, it's got fire yeah. weakness, which isn't really good for it right now right. because because fire is so prevalent. You know, Santa Scorch is is pretty much tied with Eternatus for being the BDIF right now, outside of ADP Zacian. I feel like everyone just already has already like knows how strong that card is, so we don't even mention it. But right. Um. No, I um. You know, even if it had four, I, I'm surprised it didn't give it a four retreat cost because that would even mm -hmm. bump it up for me a little. Start bit. to see some tank. Um, yeah, but no, I'm gonna give this card a one. I, I don't really think it's that great. Yeah, I got to give it a one too. I really, I can't find an excuse to play this card. It, it's just so much worse than all the other metal Pokemon yeah. we could be playing. So, yeah, sorry, but... Duraludon, not representing metal the greatest, but that's okay because metal doesn't need any more support. It has so much already. So. I'm okay with it. But poor Duraludon, I did like him as a Pokemon. All right, let's go to yeah, our uh, dude. This is, uh, we were talking beforehand, and you were talking to me about this card. And so I'm going to let you take this one away. But we got Altaria right here 110 colorless Pokemon, ability it's hard coat. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from. I didn't finish it because we all know. It's going Pokemon V and Pokemon GX. And Speed Dive hits two colorless energy for 60. Winner, talk to me about why you love this card so much. Um, this card's busted. Uh it's <laughs> it's really good. Uh it can it can fit anywhere. It, it's a stage one, so you don't need rare candy, you just need swab blue. It can fit in any way. It can fit in any deck. I mean, you can play this kind of like how people played um the Nine Tails uh from uh what is it, team up. Um, you know, kind of the same way, you know, that prevented uh what was it, GX and EX, I believe? Now this yeah. is GX and V. Right. So this is pretty good. It's colorless. The attack isn't that great. And here's my here's my problem with it. Keldeo one-shots this. Mm. And it doesn't do weakness on Keldeo. Um, that's that's kind of like my biggest problem with it is is um is Keldeo one-shots it with for 110. So yeah. that's kind of a problem. You know, Keldeo's popping up more and more. Um, more so for the Eternatus matchups because you want to you just completely just like blow up the blow up an Eternatus in one shot with the GX move. But um, yeah, that that's the only problem. I'm, I'm actually going to give this card a four yeah. because this card is, is is awesome. I mean, the ability is strong. We've seen it already, but I think it gets stronger here, and I want to see where Stall goes because I like Stall. Yeah, um, I like playing Stall. Right, but um. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it a four. Um, I think that's kind of where it lies. I think the fact that uh, Keldeo is still relevant and can one shot this and not bat an eye um, is, is, uh, is unfortunate. And the attack is just bad. Um, yeah. That's the other problem too. The attack is just straight up bad. Um, so, but yeah, I give it a four. I think it's good. All right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's worth pointing out that it also does have lightning weakness. Um, which is which is uh, you know depending upon depending upon what your opponent is playing, but that means Zapdos is going to one shot it. Um, so I think I think a lot of Lightning decks are are still trying to play Zapdos. Um, so so uh, especially as stuff like this continues to be relevant, like if Decidueye and Altaria continue to show up at stuff, people are going to tech for it. Um, they're going to play you know at least one non GX attacker. But, I mean, like Winter just said, you know, in Dark, their non-GX attackers of choice are mostly Hoopa, right? So, 
Hoopa is not going to knock this out um, unless they're playing the ability Hoopa and you got a bunch of them on your bench. Then it will knock it out. But, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I like it too. I think it's really good. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to give it a four. Four, like my gut says that four is a little too high for this card, um, because we have had Decidueye and it has not seen a lot of success, at least in my experience. Um, and so. Yeah, I think I gotta give it. I think I gotta give this a three. Like, I still think it's a great card, but I just don't know how super relevant it is. Uh, everything Winter said is like a hundred percent true, but um, my gut says four is a little too high, so I'm gonna downvote it just a little bit, a little bit. Leave it neutral. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with Decidueye is that is that when you when you play Decidueye, you know the the, the abilities are the same. Uh, you know the yeah. the, the, the Atari and Decidueye have the same abilities. The problem with Decidueye is when you when you build Decidueye, you got to build the deck around Decidueye. Yeah. You know, and Decidueye isn't really, like, yeah, it stops it. The attack is good, but it's not really like a powerhouse. It's very right. it's very beatable. The deck is 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 built around this card. Altaria can fit anywhere. Right. So you could put it in ADP. You could put it in Welder. You could put it in Sen or Firebox. You could put it in Scorch. You right. can put it in. You know, it can fit in any in any place. Um, I mean, you got to play the Swap Blue, of course. It's not like you have Ditto where that can just go literally anywhere. Right. But um, but I feel like you get more versatility with this card because the ability is strong. Is is it is it necessarily like a card you want to build a deck around? Maybe not. Maybe this card is the real way to use the ability because you can kind of put it in anything. You can't really put Decidueye in anything. I mean, people right. toy around with you know the Inteleon Decidueye, and there's been an ADP Decidueye, but right. they're not good because. Decidueye is a deck you have to build around to make it work. You right. can't just fit it somewhere. Where this can be fit in a lot of different places. I agree. I yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, I like Altaria as a Pokemon too. That's just a solid plus. But oh, even though it's yeah, totally Altaria is sweet. I, I'll never forget being like eleven, twelve, and like gym leader. What is it? Winona had uh, had this Pokemon. I was like, oh my goodness, a flying dragon type. That's sick. Oh yeah, super cool. So. That looks like a bird. <laughs> Very cool. I'm excited to see where this card goes. I'm definitely curious about it. But I think we got our trainers next, right? Let's see. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. We got, we got two little guys here. So so of all the trainers, so what they did, this this set's called Champion's Path, right? Champion's Path, the whole idea of it is that it's like all the gym Pokemon and, and gym leaders from the Sword and Shield game. So they reprinted a lot of the gym leaders that we've already gotten, like Marnie, like Kabu, um, like well, Professor Magnolia isn't technically a gym leader, but same kind of deal. So the idea is that you're kind of walking through that. Um, however, we did get two new uh, item cards. The first one is Rotom Foam. So this one says, look at the top five cards of your deck, choose one of them, and shuffle the others back into your deck. Then put that card on top of your deck. So, um, yeah, interesting ability. I mean, it, it, it's, it's eerily familiar to Jirachi, obviously, where you look at the top five. You choose one, shuffle the cards back in your deck. I don't think it's as good as Jirachi, obviously, because the card goes on top of the deck instead of going in your hand. There is, of course, uh, Oranguru from Sword and Shield, which will swap a card in your hand with the card on the top of your deck. Or things like Chinchino, that will just straight up draw with its... Uh, I don't even know what it's actually... Oh, it's Make Do, I believe, but I always just call it Trade, where you just discard a card, draw two. I think it's called Make Do. Um, so, so that's something as well where you can just draw into it that way you can Dedenne, you can Crobat. There's a lot of ways to get that card. So I'm not super, uh, super concerned about that. And it is an item. And I think for an item, just playing it for free, getting some stuff could be cool. I don't know what decks are going to play it. I don't know what decks have deck space to play. It. I think that's my biggest concern with this card. Winter, do you see any other concerns that I missed? Uh, I think this card is bad. I think it's straight up bad. Um, I was reading an article about the, uh, about Champions Path, um, and uh, someone had said that this is the best card in the set, and I just laughed out loud. Um, the problem is, is that where where do you where do you put this in? Like this card effectively does nothing. Uh, all it does is let you rearrange the top. This this there's a card in Yu-Gi-Oh. What is it called? Ancient Telescope. I remember it from like the very beginning starter decks. And you look at the top five, and you put them back in in, in, in any order. You know, very similar to uh, very similar to this. And uh, I'm kind of like, okay, like what? 
<laughs> you know, like what's the uh, like like I gotta use another ability to get a card in my hand. Like it'd be it'd be pretty cool if like you could do some sort of like manipulation where you could like look at the top three and then draw one. I mean, that would be kind of broken, but mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I just, I don't see how this card does anything really. It's kind of like, all right, you're going to rearrange the top. That's great. But now I got to do something else to get the card that I want. It's like a, it's like a, a two-step process. Like, right. I don't, I don't really want, I'd rather just play a supporter. Like I'd rather just play like, you know, get seven cards to Dene, Crobat. I mean, right. I'm going to, I give it a one. I mean, I, I, this card is just like bad. It's just not good. I don't like it. Yeah, I definitely like I definitely see that um that line of thought. Like I think that that's definitely um something there. I I will say I'm not as down on this card as you are and the only reason why is because I actually think this card could be decent in like your control and combo decks. And the reason for that is, you know, we lost our or, our resource management or in guru. And what that means is we were actually discussing this. I actually didn't expect to say this, but I, I think as I've been thinking about it, um, you know, a, a big problem with control decks right now is that you deck yourself because um, you don't have any way to, like, recur your cards anymore. I mean, you have some ways, Ordinary Rod and stuff like that, but as far as, like, a really efficient, just easy attack that you could do for one energy like Orin Guru's resource management mm -hmm. was. And so because of that, it, it has kind of made cards like Chinchino – like um like Pidgeotto a little bit less desirable because they're drawing so many cards and like drawing cards is great it's awesome but like if you're playing a, a a game that you're expecting to go long and you're drawing a bunch of cards you run that risk of decking yourself whereas Rotom Phone lets you get like Rotom Phone plus Oranguru lets you get one card out of your deck but it's the card that you want so at or out of this assuming that the card that you want is in the top five which like it probably, you're you're probably likely to hit something useful in the top five cards of your deck. So, I think that's pretty good. Granted, that's on, that's really the only use that I can see for this card. And I don't control is like not the greatest right now. So, um, I'm not gonna I'm gonna give it a two. Like I'm gonna give it more than a one. But that's that's kind of the only place where I can see this card being useful. And I think it is good for that. But other than that, I don't I can't think of a deck that has the space to run them. So. That, that's my issue with it. Yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I don't see where the space is going to come from. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's like the ability isn't necessarily bad, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I just don't feel like it's good, right? I think at this point in time, it's a one. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think I think it could be done maybe a little bit better. You're just looking at the top five and then that's it. Right. So, um, but we'll see. Yeah, like you said, it's a, you know, it's a potential control element. This on your turn one, could be good if you get like you know maybe a bad setup, but like your deck should be designed to to, to yeah. mitigate bad setup already. You know. Right, right. right. Yeah, you don't so, want to be using this card to draw out of problems. You want to be using this card right, to exactly. get cards that are going to make a problem for your opponent. If that makes sense. You yeah. Know, you want to use this card aggressively. Right. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and that's where I am, and I think the deck space and control comes from. If you were thinking you were running a four four line of Chinchino. Well, don't run a four-four line of Chinchino anymore. Run a run three Oranguru, so you just cut it in more than half. Four Rotom Phone, and now you have an extra card that you can put in your deck. That's kind of where I, where my head's at. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, maybe maybe I'll toy around with it a little bit and see myself, because um, I could be totally wrong that it's not even good for control. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a two, even if it is good for control. I think it's still a two. But let's take a look at our next item card here. We got Suspicious Food Tin. Um, and this is one for Psychic, and I don't know why I wrote M's instead of P's for Psychic Energy, uh, forgive me for that, uh, but anyway, the, the ability of it does heal 80 damage from one of your Pokemon, has at least one Psychic Energy attached, if you healed any damage in this way, discard a Psychic Energy from it, I feel like this was just kind of made for Gardevoir, but I don't know, I think it's fine if, like, a healing Psychic deck becomes big. But I think because we just talked about how how uh, how Gardevoir is not the greatest Pokemon right now, um, I don't know that this item is the greatest item. Like I think the item is good in a vacuum, but like if it doesn't have a Pokemon partner, like it doesn't really do anything. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. Winter, what do you think? I so Altaria is my favorite card in the set, right? Yeah. So that's that's the card I like the most. I think this card is the best card in the set. Okay. Yep. 
I think this card is amazing, and I'm going to give it a five, and here's why. So it, it, it does help the problem out with psychics. You know, um, I think this could also be really good with, with, uh, with Dragapult um, being, mm-hmm. being, you know, these tanky decks. One thing that we need, and one thing I think Stone Jorner, or Stone Jorner VMAX is really good at, is you can actually heal that Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And I think healing is going to be more relevant once we have these super tanky, yeah. bulky VMAX decks and, and we can kind of like fine tune them a little bit more to include, you know, like I, I already play Malawana in, in, in my in my VMAX decks, mm-hmm. my, you know, my, my, my larger decks, even um, it's not a psychic, it's not a VMAX, but my bird trio deck, I play mm-hmm. that in there. But um, Suspicious Food Tin is great because it's it's essentially it's a better hyper potion i mean it doesn't yeah. do it doesn't heal as much you don't have to discard two yeah um and um what's nice now is we have a really great supporter which i'm tooling around a little bit with now um uh, rose now so you could potentially discard one of these and uh, so let's, let's, let's say you're healing and you're you discard a psychic energy let's say you're playing dragapult you know what i mean you discard a psychic energy to heal 80, you know, heal up a little bit, or use two to do 160 for, uh, discard two for 160, you rose, right? To yeah. get the energy, to get the uh, energies back on. And then you play like an engine like Steel Valley. This, this could be a deck right here. You yeah. play an engine like Steel Valley to just draw your whole hand back. You know, um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it, it's a long shot, but I think for the cost, for the healing and the cost, I feel like this card is amazing. I'm going to give it a five. Yeah, I think I think in a vacuum uh, and, and, is good. Yeah, I don't necessarily think I, I'm also more so working off of this card's potential yeah. as well. I think this card has huge potential, but I think now you don't really have to worry about the drawbacks of discarding your of discarding your energy. Um, uh, like, and, and I want to go back for a sec because I said the the Alchemy V Max. You know, the problem with that was discarding energy. Because that's dealing damage based on, like, that's your engine. You right. know what I mean? But when it right. comes to, like, you just playing the game and you, you know, like, you have, like, the one to two, potentially three energy attacks, you can afford to discard some energy because Rose helps get you back there, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so you could potentially heal Rose. And then if you're playing Silvali, I think Silvali is really the only way to get your hand back after something like that. But you could play that. And then you're, you're, and then you're good to go, you know? So... I, I think the, the the eighty for one energy heal as an item is really good, so I'm gonna give this a five. Yeah, I think the card like on its own is really really good, um, and I think even without like a rose thing, it's only one energy. So if you yeah. can't afford to discard the energy, you just don't play it. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah, so many right. decks where it's like, oh, it's turn three, my dragapult already has two energy on it. I'll just discard one of its energies and then attach one for the turn. You know what I mean? So as long right. as you're not playing but against a deck that decelerates energy, that gets rid of your energy, you're you're probably okay without an engine. Now with Rose, obviously it fuels the Rose too. So I think you're I think you might be onto something there. And uh maybe you should do some brewing with that because it sounds pretty cool. Um one of the cool things about this card too is if you if you already have a deck that might play hyper potion. You could play Hyper Potion and Suspicious Food Tin. So you, you're kind of like you multiplying your heal. If healing, if you're just going to go all into healing, like let's say Gardevoir VMAX, if you want to play it, you just go all in. You know what I mean? So um, so I do think that that could give some more consistent healing. I'm not sure how viable that is. But yeah, I don't know if I can give this thing a five. I think the card on itself is super strong, um, but I just don't think it has a great partner right now. Um, so I'll give it, like, I definitely see what you're saying, Winter. Like, you've, you've, I was not going to give this a four, but I think I'm going to give it a four because I think your argument is definitely convincing there, but I can't, I don't think I can give it a five. Yeah. That's fair. I, I am also working off of, uh, this card's potential. Um, I think, I think this, this, um, I think this card is really good and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I have to give it a five. I think this card from what I've seen right now is the best card in the set. That's right. So coming to a tournament with you. Uh, Winter playing Suspicious Food Tin and Rose in the same deck. Yes, it's gonna happen. Keep it's it... gonna happen. Yeah. No, I'll be play- I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be playing Sil Valley too. You need, oh, yeah. you need Sil Valley. Oh yeah, you need Sil Valley if you're playing Rose. <laughs> yeah, and if you uh, didn't know that that was the right way to play Rose, that means you probably didn't watch our set review of Rebel Clash. 
where we you said watch that. It. You got to go back and watch it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And what? what are you, so I think this is, this is the last card, right? This is the last card. The there last is card. No, I, honestly, there, there is no other card in the set that I want to review because – like you know we we ended off on the best card let's leave it that way <laughs> yeah no, that sounds good yeah so like if you haven't gone back and watched our other set reviews and you enjoyed this one you should go check out our channel check out our other set reviews because unison games have been trying to do i mean what was our first set review was it rebel clash or was it sword and shield i think it, uh rebel clash rebel clash so since rebel clash so that's this is our third set review um you're gonna want to check those out because I think they'll help you play. Even if you don't agree with what we have to say, they'll still make you more aware as a player. That was a big thing I did to try to become a better player was listen to set reviews. And, um, I mean, we got them. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, you should definitely subscribe. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of cool content about stuff like this where it's like strategy, but also about openings and news and other things like that. You guys should definitely check them out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. There, of course, if you don't have your notifications turned on, go ahead and ring that bell so that you can be notified when we drop new content. We come out with content very frequently, and Champion's Path has received a lot of hype, which means it will, in turn, receive a lot of content. So you guys are going to want that. But uh, hey, actually, give it to me, man. Oh, I'm sorry. To I, I think we should do one more review. Let's review Eldegoss V. Eldegoss V. All right. What do you think of Eldegoss? Eldegoss V. Well, um, I mean, we didn't. We, the reason why it's not in here is because it was in Rebel Clash. But we, I, right. I think maybe a lot of people's perception of Eldegoss V has changed. I think people were disappointed with it. But I actually think Eldegoss is, as long as you don't need all five of your bench slots, I think you have to play Eldegoss because it's just so good to have that supporter on command in your discard pile. Um, I really like it. I think it can serve as deck space because you don't have to run as high counts of your supporters if you're running Eldegoss. Um, so I'm actually a huge fan of it. I think it's a game-winning card because you just like Eldegoss V, boss's orders, win the game. You know what I mean? So yep. I'm a huge yep. fan of it. And, I think Eldegoss is a five. And you know what's funny? I remember during our set review, I, uh, I was like, this card, best card in the set, yeah. and now it's coming back, and I wanted to review it again. I still think it's a five. Oh, yeah. I think it's the best card in Champion's Path. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, yeah. I mean, it, it is, though. Like, <laughs> best <laughs> best card overall, best new card suspicious, in my opinion. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I uh, <laughs> I, I, I like Incineroar V, but, but I'm, I'm partial to uh, Fire Dex, so... Right. So uh, I admit that that's that's totally biased. But yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm hyped for Eldegoss V. We'll definitely we'll definitely throw it on the screen. It'll make an appearance. But hey, don't forget Woo! if you're watching, let us know in the comments what your favorite card is in Champions Path because we're really curious about it. And you know we've said what our favorite cards are, but we you know you might have a different opinion. So you might be smarter than us. I don't know. Throw it in the comments, and we will definitely take a look at that. But thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. Thank you for supporting our channel. That is awesome. Winter, thank you so much for joining me for this video, man. Always. This is what Team Metroflex does. Absolutely, man. Uh, I'm pretty hyped for, for the upcoming meta with Champions Path. I, I hope you are too. I'm hoping that we'll be taking down some tournaments near you if you're local to the Connecticut area. If not... Keep watching our channel. We got more videos coming. And like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you really soon in the next video.